welcome to chapter 35 and in this topic we are going to be revisiting the correlation ID solution from chapter 26. Now why do we have to go and revisit that? And that's because I recently bumped this library to GraphQL version 12 and with that the actual GraphQL engine will execute um, asynchronously by default and so that's true while previously in the old tutorials it was not executed executing by default what's the difference what was the change basically there's a new thread pool that will be enabled and created and what this will do is this will be the thread pool that will handle the resolvers and previously it would be the NIO threads that would call the resolvers but now the NIO thread will hand over the work to the GraphQL async task executor. And this will be the first thread that will execute our query resolvers. So previously we had access to the correlation ID here. And therefore we could just simply wrap our executors that delegated to the data loaders and async resolvers and pass the correlation ID. So we would set this in the Tomcat IO thread. We would then propagate that to the data loaders. But now we have a gap between these. So how can we propagate to from the Tomcat NIO thread, which we still will use to set the correlation ID. So the Tomcat NIO thread continues to execute this code where we set, so it's the first piece that executes the correlation ID. But how do we propagate that to these async threads. And how we can do that is by using an async task decorator. As you can see here, this is where we build the core config. And what this will do is allow us to wrap and propagate from the async executor or from the NIO to the async executor. So what does that look like? Let me close this guy. Well, it's it's similar to the task decorator from Spring, but it's called an async task decorator. So you'll notice these are pretty much identical. Runnable, decorate, runnable. And here, runnable, decorate, runnable. So this will allow us to get a copy of the map and set it in the async thread, which will, this, which will be executing here. And, and then we're gonna execute the, the, the actual runnable. So it's pretty much the same as what we had previously, only we return a runnable. And in here, yeah, we we didn't, we just said void because we manually executed it. And we also um, implement task decorator. Why? Because inside our utilities or executor factory, we now use a task thread pull task executor. And this allows us to set the task executor of this to the context task decorator. And this executor is now used for the thread pools used in data loaders and the thread pools used in async threads, so or async resolvers. So we basically have one MDC context task decorator, implements two interfaces and can be injected into the, the platform libraries and also used in our configuration. So it's pretty nice. So I hope that kind of made sense and let me breakpoint and debug this to give you an example. And if you wish, you can look at the PR to see all the changes. So I start this in debug. I can see here now that I have my async task decorator, which is the MDC. So it's cool. Let me close that. The application has started. I put the, the breakpoint here, which is the, the context builder where we set the correlation ID. And for WebSockets, we will set that correlation ID in the on start. So inside here, we put it here because of just we follow the same pattern as our security context. And in the framework, it'll automatically pass the security context. It's it's done by default. So let's go and make a query. So that's going to be the introspection query. We'll just play that through. 
So I, inside here, I can write client, and you see we're in Tomcat NIO. So we put the thread in Tomcat NIO. And by this point, we're now in GraphQL Executor 3. So this is handed to the, to the async GraphQL threads. And inside here, we can see MGC target map. And you'll see the correlation ID is there. So that's nicely done. And what about if we have an async resolver like, like this? So we want to call for assets. So let's play that. Not sure what happened there with my GraphQL. It seems to be froze that. Let me play that through. So now we query with the ID. We're still in NIO. We go to GraphQL Executor 6. We play. Now we're in Threadful Task Executor 1. And inside here, yeah, we have the correlation ID. So it's nicely propagated throughout four different threads. So the Tomcat NIO thread to the async thread, and the async thread to this Threadful Task Executor 1, so sorry, three threads. So it's nicely propagated across. And if we go to the decorator, if we come into the clear, let's see it clear. So it clears from thread pool one, and we know this is safe because we have thread affinity. We know that only one process can execute in a thread in a time in Java, not like Kotlin with crow routines. And we can play that through. So, okay, well, it, it, <laughs> it timed out. Let me play it again. Ah, so it's cached now. I'm not sure what's going on here. Seems to be a playground issue, caching the responses. Hit play, come through, info. Clear task nine. There's the, the thread. And if I ask for assets, ID, I play. So we execute 10. Now we can clear because it's, it's handed off. This executes. It'll clear itself as well. And therefore, we've cleared the thread. So Tomcat NIO thread won't be cleared, but it will be cancelled or overridden on the next request, which is fine, no problem. So that's um, one way of what we're doing for to propagate the, the correlation ID between the threads now, which I think is nice and simple. So thank you very much for, for watching this tutorial, and I hope you have a great day.